Hi, my name is Sarah and I'm the founder of Sourdough for Beginners. I've created this video so that you can make sourdough in an easy way and understand what the essential processes are, demystify everything, and get yourself to a successful loaf. So let's go. When you first start learning about sourdough, you're going to see tons of different terms, tons of different processes, and you know all of these processes are valuable and valid in sourdough. But the issue becomes that you may understand that a process exists, but you might struggle to understand where and when to use that process and how to put it all together into a loaf that actually works for you um, and so what we've done is we've narrowed it all the way down to you just need to do these things and you're going to be successful and then as you learn about the more advanced processes or the non-essential processes you can start to add them into your routine I appreciate it so much if you would subscribe um, and when you're done this video um, consider getting our ebook it's 34 pages it includes photo tutorials it's downloadable as a PDF it's got a glossary of all the crazy sourdough terms you might learn um, and it's really going to help you get to real success in sourdough it's no secret that my philosophy is keep it simple. Keep it as simple as possible. You don't actually need all kinds of tools. Um, you should get a scale if you can get one. They're inexpensive. I'll put a link in the description to one that costs like less than $15 on Amazon and works really well. Um, but start super simple. Start with a low hydration recipe. Master the essential processes and then start working it from there. You can totally do this. So what are the essential processes? They're simple and easy. Have an active starter, which we'll talk about. Mix to a shaggy dough, nothing special in your mix. Let it rest a little, stretch and fold three or four times until you've got strength with 30 minute rests in between the stretching and folding. Bulk proof, use a clear sided container so that you can see your dough rising. Pre-shape your dough, shape your dough, put a functional score on and bake. It's that simple. Everything else is optional. Even though I'm encouraging you to start with just the essential processes and keep it simple at first, it's still valid to understand what the more advanced or optional techniques are. So you've got creating a levain, which is um, manipulating your starter a few hours before you actually bake with your bread. You've got auto leasing flour and water, which is where you mix your flour and water several hours before you add in your starter and your salt. Um, you've got adding your levain or starter to your auto lease dough and then waiting and then adding salt. Um, you've got very precise long rest times in between um, mixing and adding ingredients and stretching and folding. Um, at the stretch and fold stage, you've got different ways to stretch and fold. Um, you've got the window pane effect to test for strength. Um, bulk proofing can actually be adjusted from straight up just watch your dough double to look for a 30% rise or a 50% rise and that's going to be affected by your hydration. Um, of course you still have your pre-shape but after pre-shaping you could be laminating your dough, you could be adding mix-ins, um, you could be doing a little bit more advanced shaping using the push and pull technique um, to create you know air and bubbles and strength in your dough. You could be cold proofing in your fridge um, for a period of time, possibly overnight. Um, you've got your functional score, of course, but then you can start doing really pretty decorative scores and really advanced techniques in how your bread looks when it's done. Um, there's a hundred different ways to bake sourdough. Um, you can open bake, you can use a loaf pan, you can use a Dutch oven, all of these things we can learn about. And then there's a hot score, which is a technique where you take your bread out of the oven after it's been in for a few minutes and reset your um, functional and possibly even your decorative scores. So all of these techniques, like I said, are very valid. And over time, you can and should, if you want to, add these to your repertoire of skills. But first, let's just get to a successful loaf the easy way. Making a starter is easy. Take 60 grams of flour and 60 grams of water, mix them together in a jar, pop the lid on the jar and leave it sitting for a couple of days. After a couple of days, discard half 60 grams of your starter and refeed it 60 grams each of starter and water. Now you've got 180 grams. Every day after that, discard 120 grams of starter 
and refeed 60 grams of flour and water. The reason we discard every day is just to keep our sourdough starter from growing so huge that we can't manage it anymore. And the reason we keep our starter small while we're establishing it is because we have to throw our discard away until this, a starter is established. I know it seems wasteful, but it's just part of the process. Once the starter is established, you won't need to throw your discard away. You can either use it in a bread recipe or in discard recipes. Most sourdough recipes that you're going to find online are measured in grams. Um, and it's interesting because most of the people who are in my group are actually from the States, and that's a measurement that's not standard um, to their country. But I think that the reason grams are used is because they're really quite precise. Ounces have 28 grams, um, and you know some recipes only call for five or six or seven grams, and it just gets a lot harder to convert. But that being said, if you don't have a scale yet and you want to get started today, here's some conversions to cups and measures. You can just hit pause on the video and take a quick um, review of doing it this way with cups instead of with um, grams in a scale. Store your starter on the counter if you're going to bake with it frequently. It'll need to be fed every day in this case. You can either discard directly into your bread recipe or into a sourdough discard recipe of your choice. If you're not going to bake frequently, store your starter in the fridge, feed it either once a week or four to 12 hours before you plan to bake with it, whichever comes first. Sourdough starters are really resilient. It's almost impossible to kill them and there's lots of troubleshooting that you can do. I really recommend that you use a sealed lid to prevent mold and not attract fruit flies. Um, but in most cases, if you think you've messed something up or you've missed a feeding or there's hooch on top of your starter, whatever it may be, the answer is almost always just discard and feed again. Um, the only time you really need to worry about whether or not your starter is okay is if there's any kind of mold. And then at that point, you should probably throw it away and start again. So this is our very simple and basic low hydration beginner bread recipe. We always recommend that beginners start with a lower hydration recipe because it's much easier to work with. It's a lot less sticky. Um, it's a lot more forgiving. So what I've done here is I've put the beginner bread recipe and then once you've mastered all of the essential techniques, I've given you an option to increase your hydration both in your starter and in your water. The beginner bread recipe is easy. It's 120 grams of active starter, 680 grams of water, 1000 grams of flour, and you can use any blend of flour that you like, and 20 grams of salt. When you're ready to increase your hydration, increase your starter to 200 grams and your water to 700 grams. Timing is one of the hardest things to manage with sourdough, especially if you've got a life. Um, the beginner bread recipe is actually set up so that you can feed your starter the night before, and if you begin mixing early in the morning, you can bake your bread the same day. Um, Timing is going to really vary depending on which techniques you're using um, and can take up to three days. But if you want to start practicing and you want to get to a good low, this timing structure here, um, where you feed your starter the night before, start mixing in the morning and bake, you know, around supper time, um, then you can get through it. Okay, let's get started. So first things first, I start by measuring 120 grams of active starter into my bowl. Next, I tear my scale to zero and I add 680 grams of water. I'm using regular tap water. I use a whisk to mix my water and my starter and I stir until my starter is fully dissolved. Next, I tear my scale back to zero and I add 850 grams of all-purpose or regular bread flour. Next, I add 150 grams of a sturdier flour, either whole wheat, rye, spelt, oat. I get to a total of 1,000 grams of flour. Next, I add 20 grams of salt. I just pour it in. I teared my scale back to zero again and watch for 20 grams. Now I use a spoon to blend my flour and salt on top of my liquid 
And once it's blended, I begin stirring the dough with my spoon. I keep stirring with the spoon until the dough's really started to come together, and then I finish it with my hands. Now it's time to do our first set of stretch and fold. Stretching and folding builds strength into your bread. As you can see during the first stretch and fold, the dough still rips, it's not quite together. As we continue to stretch and fold two to three more times, it'll get stronger and I'll show you soon how to tell when you've built enough strength. It's time for our second stretch and fold. You can see just by looking at the dough that it's starting to come together more. And when I stretch it and fold it, it's holding together. It's starting to build strength. This is my third set of stretch and folds. The dough's getting stronger, holding together really well. And this is going to be my last set of stretch and folds before I begin separating my dough into their containers for bulk proofing. There will be a little bit of stretch and folding then, but we're really getting there with strength. Now I'm gonna separate my dough into two approximately 900 gram each loaves per mix. I'll end up with four loaves altogether when I'm done. I'm gonna just do a quick little stretch and fold to take the stickiness away, and then I'm going to separate the dough and press it into clear straight-sided containers. I'm placing the lids on my containers, and then I'm gonna use a Sharpie to mark the height on the side of the container. This will make it so that as the dough bulk proofs through the day, I'll be able to see where it started and how much it's risen. My heights are marked, and now I'm going to leave this on the counter in a warm place to bulk proof for the afternoon. It's a really good idea to preheat your oven for a long time. You want your oven to be at temperature, and especially if you're using a Dutch oven, you also want to preheat your Dutch oven in the oven while the oven's preheating so that when you put your bread in, it's nice and hot. Now, an optional process, of course, is using a cold Dutch oven. All of these things can be adjusted, but with the beginner bread recipe, we're suggesting that before you're ready to start pre-shaping, you get that oven up to temp. By pre-shaping, we're starting to build tension into the dough, trap the bubbles, and let it um, get ready to start being shaped or put away for bulk proofing. I'll work with my bench scraper, which in my case is a knife, to gather the dough up into tight balls, and then I'll let them rest for about 30 minutes. Time to shape our dough. So I take my dough, I flip it over onto a floured surface, I stretch it out into a loose rectangle, then I make a pamphlet. I fold up the bottom third, I fold down the top third, I tuck in the edges, get all the sticky parts wrapped up, and then I roll. Then I'll take my hands, coat them in flour, and gently shape the dough to build tension. You should see bubbles starting to form here, you should see the bread starting to stand up on its own. You need to be very gentle, but also at the same time, build this final bit of strength. My oven is fully preheated now, and my tray of water on the bottom rack is bubbling and boiling. I'm going to score my dough and place it in the oven to bake. I'm gonna cover the dough with a light dusting of rice flour, gently rub it in, and then score about a half inch deep down close to the middle of the bread, and then put some cosmetic scores on the edges just for looks. I've put my two loaf pans on a baking tray to make it easier to move them. I'm placing them in the oven at 450 degrees. I'm going to bake them for 25 minutes. After 25 minutes, I'm gonna open the oven, rotate the bread 180 degrees to ensure that they're being cooked evenly. 
And then for the last five or 10 minutes, I'm going to take them out of the loaf trays in order to allow them to brown up. During the first 20 minutes or so, I'll open the oven and mist a little bit of water into the oven underneath the loaf pans. My loaves have baked now for a total of 45 minutes. I'm going to take them out of the oven, remove them from the loaf pans and paste, place them on parchment paper and put them back into the oven for five or 10 minutes just to brown them up on the edges and the sides. I'm also going to pull the tray of water out of the oven now. And now the most exciting moment, yay! My loaves are done. I'm so excited, they turn out perfectly. They have a beautiful ear. I'm gonna set them on a cooling rack now to cool for about an hour before I cut into them. We're gonna eat them for supper tonight. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for following along. I love having you here. I love, love making these tutorials. Please subscribe. Please consider getting the ebook. Um, and by the way, I got these, uh, these earbuds given to me as a gift and it's crazy. It's crazy how good they are. It's while I'm recording this, it's like I'm fully immersed in the video and I hope the sound sounds really good. Um, I'm just so excited about them that I'm going to share a link to them in the description as well. Everything you need uh, is linked in the description. So um, all of the links to anything that's relevant in this video, just click on the description and make sure you comment and, and ask your questions because I'm always happy to help. Thanks guys. See you later.